Tony landed his shots and moved out of the way. Look at the fast hands. This is brilliant stuff from James Tony. Area of James Tony. That's right. Maybe set something up for later on. That's right. Those body punches is helping him. He's not skillful. He's not known to win fights on points anyway. So why not just keep hitting on the punch, catch this guy leaning and grab him. Oh, he doesn't even care. His corner told him when Tony rolled to go on the meet. He keeps going on top. And George, you've referred several times as Tony lands two more uppercuts in there and stuns Iran Barkley. Stunned in all of these punch stat numbers that you're going to see in the closing rounds. You are looking at a statistic. The wind turns his head like nothing has happened. And then rains that right hand over the top. And all the talk about how different he'd be at 160. Now, this should have been a weapon for him early on. What Tony is doing, you seldom see from a young fighter. This is something you see good veterans like a late Muhammad Ali who just jab right in. And he's an awfully experienced young fighter, George. It looks real good on James Tony. And the 32 don't look as good on Barkley. Left hooks from Tony. Barkley is stunned again. There is no standing eight count tonight. Plus, he needs to create pressure. Good left, Jim. Guter Treffer. Und gut zum Körper. Und trifft hier selbst. Kurz mit der rechten und Holyfield. Die rechte voll. Und nochmal. Und zum Körper. Und die rechte. Und kriegt die rechte. Jetzt. Beste Runde von James Tony. Die beste Runde überhaupt. Holyfield ist der Favorit. Auch hier bei den Buchmachern. Die haben gesagt, zu viel Erfahrung im Schwergewicht, zu gut. Schnelle Führung und die rechte. Der Schlag sah richtig hart aus, aber Holyfield steckt ihn weg. One of the most successful trainers of heavyweight fighters ever. A man who trained Joe Frazier and Riddick Bowe as his own guy. George has been very, very successful. And, he, you know, he established himself as a top trainer, and not just as an assistant to Eddie Futch and also was managed by Eddie Futch. Theo Torrance needs a good victory here tonight to establish himself. Tony seems to fall sloppily into the ropes on his uh, on his feet there. I don't think he's hurt. I think he just pulled it Rockman in. And in this type of a situation, Tony is way more effective in there with short punches. I agree. And he whacks Rockman with a quick right hand inside. But a good left hook by Rockman and a series of punches. He continues to land in close. Tony hits him flush in the jaw with a right hand punch. Good shot. That's a big punch out quick. Big right hand up top. Now, Tony now trying to counter that left hand. Crashing a right hand off Tony's right. skull. And gets him with a good right cross inside against the ropes. Tony with a right hand counter. And Rockman has been hurt in fights before. Thanks. But James Tony has hands like that steel of a middle ring. Well, I see Rockman is one of the biggest hands I've ever saw. Why does it matter? I think because it actually shows punching power. I mean, you're, you're most of you guys with big, big hands use that shows strength. Lennox Lewis and George Foreman certainly had big hands. Rockman, I believe, has bigger hands than either of those two guys. Does, uh, Tony weighed in at 237. This is who this guy is. The rounder he gets, the better he gets. He hasn't lost a fight in nine years, fighting a guy who hasn't won an important fight in five years. That's what's important. Terrific round. Emmanuel James Tony is looping that right hand from somewhere behind his back all the way over the top but and landing it. And landing it. Will. Yeah, he's landing it. It's very Why solid can't Rockman get out of the way? Well, Rockman is not really a. It, just, it takes a great defensive fighter. Rockman is hitting the winner's fight just on what he's doing now. 
Well, Freddie Roach wanted him to come in at around 220. Just win all the rounds with your jab. That's the plan. Come on, pick him up. Tony comes back with a little bit more fire now to begin the sixth after having taken some of the fifth round off. Tony no longer able to move on his feet, seemingly. Leans against the ropes, and Rockman gets a chance to wail away. Not really landing anything big, but tapping Tony on the shoulder, tapping him on the ribcage. James comes back with a three or four punch combination. Tony lands an uppercut. Good left hook to the body. Fast hands by Tony. Rockman throwing more and continuing to land. Now, Tony will fight good right here because his legs are gone. He doesn't have the legs. So as long as he's in one spot, he's okay. Take him back to the middle of the ring and fight him out in space. But Rock would feel that by using his strength, he's still he just going to muscle him inside still. Now we go into the second half of the fight. Tony begins to land those quick counter shots again. Two right hands in there. And a right hand uppercut. Rock still busy. Busier than you expect for a 238-pound man. Hit him the way he's been getting hit. He would have some problems tonight. Just a James just doesn't have that punching power as a heavyweight. Stiff jab by Tony. Rock is fighting a smart fight, but he still hasn't shown me the speed that I would thought. If he'd have got punches off with a little bit more speed and intensity. He lands a series of right hands there, crashing a couple of them off the top of Tony's skull. Tony gets to show you again how well That's he takes a punch, but Rock is able to move Tony with the right hands. Now, Tony lands another right hand, and there you see the absence of balance, which may hurt Tony on the scorecards. Yes, and that's, that's because of that extra weight and as well as age. It was just too much for him. Does that favor the bigger, stronger Asim Rockman, or does it favor the quicker, more technically crafty James it, Tony? It should favor Rockman, but in this case, yeah, I just did go along with James, but James is used to this type. And as I told you, his, his balance is very bad, and by fighting in this close right here, you don't have to worry about his balance. And he's very, very cagey inside with short punches. But I think Rockman has landed with more power in this round than in the two or three preceding rounds. Although Tony gets him with a sharp comeback right hand there. Good counter uppercut by James Tony. Rockman lands a good punch, but I think the more clean of those still are landed by Tony. I guess he don't have the power to hurt Rockman. Tony landed a flush left hook. Rockman kept on coming. Crowd is starting to chance Tony, Tony, Tony. As they get to the ninth of the schedule 12. There's a terrific straight right hand by Tony. But Tony's in hibernation a little bit here now as he waits for another opportunity. Good right hand inside by Rockman. Tony countered with a right of his own. They're fighting directly above us and they're fighting as though in a phone booth. Tony looks down as if he wants to talk to me about it. James Tony, totally aware of everything around the ring. When James Tony goes, you know, he loses his balance, goes flat. There's a straight left hand into the face of Hasim Rahman. Watch out, Come and on, you can out. see how easily he walks through James Tony's punching power to shock you. Tremendous jab. Lennox Lewis, dominant when he threw 30 jabs per round. Yep. I wonder if Tony feels a sense of urgency now. Whether he has been able to calculate what's happening here, he is the challenger for this title. Now, does he have to do more to take the title? Hard right hand by Tony. His best punch in two or three rounds. You got to knock him out. He's been, you know, Tony's pretty much hit him at will whenever he wants to. Yeah, right right hand over the top that lands for Rockman. He was fighting 50 pounds less than this just three years ago when he fought for the cruiserweight title. 77 pounds tonight, above the weight at which he knocked off Michael Dunn to win the middleweight title in 1991.